Okay, I know NVIDIA's 50 series GPUs are just about to come out, but there is a GPU that we have to talk about before we can move on to NVIDIA, which is the Intel Arc B580. So what's it like for creators? Should you buy the B580? No, absolutely not. It's the worst card on planet Earth. It absolutely sucks. It sucks like you've never seen anything else before. This is the worst card. You shouldn't buy this. Don't buy this. Okay, all the scalpers, have they gone yet? Have they clicked off the video? If you actually want to know the truth, stick it till the end of the video because I'm trying to get rid of the scalpers because they've done a bit of a problem here that I'm trying to avoid. This card is very special. Let me tell you why. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt P16, the ultimate creator laptop that doesn't just look good, but lets you bring the workstation performance anywhere. Professional 16-inch 4K OLED display, AMD Ryzen 9 AI CPU, and NVIDIA RTX 4070 GPU, and that's just the beginning. Go check out our whole playlist about this device and the full overview in the video description below. Thanks Asus ProArt for sponsoring this part of the video. Okay, I hope you understand what I'm trying to do here. If you like videos like these for creative professionals, no gaming, GPU hardware reviews, then hit that subscribe button. Videos like these are coming out every single week. By the way, I always get back to my Minec messages within 24 hours. Links in the video description below. The Intel Arc B580. This is one of the best cars that you can actually buy because for the value there is kind of no competition or it actually smacks oh. the nvidia rtx 4060 which is actually more expensive and then there is the radeon rx 7600 which is also more expensive the problem is all the other reviewers that did the gaming review for this have said this card is amazing and now it goes for around $400 instead of $250. It's almost doubled in price on Amazon and Newark. That's why I'm saying it sucks. But let's take a look at the actual performance for creators. AMD versus Nvidia versus Arc. In a normal pricing scenario, the Arc should be the cheapest. But right now, the Arc is the most expensive because of all the other blokes the flipping balance that have said that you should buy this card. The one big difference before we go into this is that this Intel Arc has 12 gigabytes of VRAM compared to the eight that we have on both of these. If you want to know more about this card's design and a little bit more overview, go check out the earlier video about the Intel Arc B580. So looking at Geekbench 6 GPU firstly, and interestingly, for some reason right now, the Geekbench 6 doesn't give me Vulcan scores. I don't know why, so we're just going to be looking at OpenCL. The RTX 4060 is about 6.8% faster, and then the RX 7600 is about 16% slower. So Arc is kind of somewhere in the middle there. But let's take a look at Puget Bench for Photoshop, which we can see now things are getting interesting. The RTX 4060 is about 5% slower in the overall score, general score about 10% slower, as well as the filter score. So the Arc is very, very good. And from the previous generation, the previous R cards have always been really, really good in Photoshop. The AMD though is very, very close. We can see an overall score roughly around 1% slower, but the filter and general score about 4 to 8% slower. So slightly slower, but closer to the arc than Nvidia. Moving on to Lightroom Classic, and I've started to add Lightroom Classic to my GPU benchmarks because previously GPU didn't really matter for Lightroom Classic, but now more and more, GPUs can accelerate your AI denoising, exporting, some of the things in Lightroom Classic as well. So looking at the performance difference here, RTX 4060 is about 10% faster in the overall score, active and passive scores around there as well. And the RX 7600 is also roughly about 10% faster, around 9.5% somewhere around there, which just shows that the ARC is kind of a little bit by behind 10% or so, but it could be a driver issue or just a little bit more optimization. Don't really know. Moving on to video editing and Premiere Pro, and this is where the Arc really, really shines. So the RTX 4060 is about four to 5% roughly slower in the standard and extended overall scores. But if we're looking at intraframe scores, for example, interestingly, that's about 15% slower. Raw score is 32% faster, on the RTX 4060, but 
Interframe and long GOP score as well as GPU effects are 16 to 23 percent slower on the RTX 4060, which is interesting, maybe because of the memory bus, but even the GPU effects are better on the R card, which never was the case. Interestingly, I would have expected the long GOP score to be even better because the RTX 4060 doesn't support 10-bit 422H.265 decoding, which this ARC does, which means on hardware, this is so much smoother. So even if you put this ARC into your AMD system, you're going to be getting Intel QuickSync. Now, in a minute, this information is a little bit invalid because Intel is not the only one that offers quick sync or hardware decoding on your video editing applications. There is also NVIDIA 50 series cards that do support H.265 422 10-bit decoding on your application, which is pretty impressive and very exciting because Intel now doesn't have the edge of their quick sync. I wonder how the market's gonna change and what's Intel gonna come up with next. Moving on to After Effects, I just couldn't get it to work on the RX 7600. It just crashed, crash, 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 crash. Don't know what was happening, but compared to the RTX 4060, we're within 1% on the overall score interestingly the gpu score where we actually testing gpu effects there is about 11 percent lead for the b580 the rtx 4060 is just slower but interestingly the tracking is faster on the rtx 4060 i don't know why because necessarily the gpu doesn't do anything in there gpu and after effects really doesn't give you as much as having more ram in terms of boost of performance and having a better cpu but regardless looks like the b580 is a little bit better moving on to davinci resolve and here unfortunately the b580 didn't complete the extended benchmark which means slightly more like cinema codex and larger resolutions but i don't think you're going to be buying this b580 for that anyway even though it does have 12 gigabytes of vram which davinci resolve loves so looking at the results the rtx 4060 is roughly about 2 to 7.5 percent slower in the basic and standard overall scores now bear in mind the basic score is with davinci resolve free version and then the standard overall score is with actual hardware acceleration and so on rx 7600 from amd is 8 percent faster in the free version but then 6 percent slower in the standard overall score with the studio version of the Renter results. But moving on, we can see that long GOP, 16% slower on the RTX 4060 and about 12% faster on the 7600. Interframe is slower on the 4060, around 17% and about 0.3% on the 7600. The raw score is actually faster on the RTX 4060 and RX 7600, which is similar results we saw in the Premiere Pro. The GPU effect score, interestingly, are about 25% slower on the 7 RTX 4060 and about 34% slower on the RX 7600. That is a huge improvement for the B580 because on the previous Arc series, the A series, the GPU effects was where they were lacking and then the rest of the things kind of were higher. But on here, even the GPU effects are absolutely killing the competition. The Fusion score is about 17% faster than the 4060 and about 17% slower in the RX 7600. As you can see, depending what you're doing in DaVinci Resolve, different GPUs have their strengths and weaknesses. Moving on to 3D and this is the part that gets a little bit tricky because Intel and AMD don't have as much support on 3D applications and Nvidia is leading in terms of software optimization, support and actual performance. If we're looking at Blender 4.3, you can see that the RTX 4060 is pretty much double the performance of the B580. Fortunately, the AMD kind of makes Intel feel a little bit better because the AMD is about 30% slower in the monster scene, yet about double the performance in junk shop scene and about 33% slower in the classroom scene. So they're kind of trading blows with AMD, but compared to the Nvidia performance, they're not so good. But if you're looking at Octane Bench or at most of the 3D applications out there, Intel's not gonna be supported there and neither is AMD. AMD does support Redshift, Intel Arc unfortunately doesn't. So if 3D application support is important to you, then I wouldn't get the Arc GPU. It would be a no-brainer to go with the NVIDIA GPUs. But what about PowerDraw? When looking at the Fermark and 
just synthetically kind of pulling as much power from the GPU as possible, I'm seeing around 150 watts pulled on the ARC B580. The RTX 4060 is pulling only 115 watts and that's the most efficient GPU on the bunch here. The RX 7600 is actually pulling more than the B580, 170 watts. So that's kind of in Intel's favor. Now I've seen some of the things online where the B580 is actually pulling a lot more when you measure it, but I don't yet have professional measuring tools for the B580. So I am using just the software there. So if you think I'm wrong, please let me know in the comment section below. So in conclusion, is the ARC B580 actually worth buying? No. Okay, scalpers have left. In reality, absolutely. The only problem that the B580 has is 3D performance in professional 3D workflows. In gaming, you know, you go check out some other gaming reviews, it's doing pretty well. If we're looking at purely photo and video editing applications, the ARC is absolutely shining there. If you can get the ARC for $250 for video editing, especially in Premiere Pro, it's a no-brainer. Bear it up with some AM5 based CPUs, 7800X or something like that, and you're going to get quick sync and really good video editing performance, which is just absolutely amazing. A GPU in the lower end that absolutely kills the competition this intel arc is absolutely fantastic and i definitely recommend it now there is a caveat though which is those flipping scalpers that have just bought all of these gpus and the gpu is so expensive which means this is not worth buying at 400 dollars don't buy this arc okay it's not worth $400, it's worth $250, which is the unfortunate thing that's happening right now. Now, please let me know how much this costs to you in your local store and convert it to USD dollars because it should be $250. Right now, it's almost double the price and it's not worth it, which is a shame. Intel, ship some more out and scalpers, don't buy the scalping ones, okay? Because then they're gonna be the ones who actually lose out on money and you should wait when this is $250 and then that's worth buying okay next up we've got 50 series coming i'm super excited you should be as well can't wait to test these ones out okay speak soon and see you in the comment section below bye bye